You know, I, I have never experienced an injury like that. And again, you know, it's, it's young guys. The game is really fast. Uh, you know, the game has got to be played fast. And sometimes they don't realize how fast they have to play it. And he gets in a bad situation and it's not his fault. Maybe uh, Brenton Buckner is just so good. He's one of the best defensive linemen in football. It was a long night for the offensive line of the Jets in some respects in that regard. But uh, they put up three, oh, by the way, touchdowns late in this game. Uh, and Josh Johnson has some good numbers, but you know by that time the game is completely oh, forty-two to ten. Yeah, I mean it's right, a, right. you know you check it off and you say good night. And uh, and you know uh, I will say that Elijah Moore is starting to show up more and more and more and more. And uh, I thought he was a really good kid coming out of Ole Miss, and he was a second-round pick, and he's starting to show uh, what we saw in college. So that's a good thing. The defensive line was. Uh, who was supposed, to, according to Troy and Joe Buck last night, and according to Rob Sala, the best defensive line Rob Sala has ever had? Yeah, uh, you know, okay. I don't know about that because sure. they basically got manhandled last night, and this game could have been a hell of a lot worse uh, if if uh, I really felt like in the fourth quarter the Colts let up a little bit. And uh, I look at the numbers; uh, they're staggering, especially from the offensive side of the Indianapolis Colts, and just how they just completely dominated the game over 500 yards of total offense. Uh, they ran for 260 yards. Uh, they were uh, just basically unstoppable in the first half, putting up 28 points. So we could we could sit about and talk about the quarterback situation, who's going to play against the Bills in 10 days, all of that stuff. At the end of the day, they they lose Marcus May. It does not look good. It looks like yeah, it's Achilles. an Achilles. Yeah. Um, you know, guys are going down all over the league. We're halfway through the season. It's a war of attrition. And uh, the Jets right now just keeps getting bleaker and bleaker. But if you're looking for silver linings, you got to look for guys like Elijah Moore and, you know, Ty Johnson and Michael Carter. And you got to look at guys like that and just hope that they continue to grow and become a significant part of whatever the, uh, you know, the Jets are, are trying to build here. I just wonder if Mike White had stayed in the game, would the defense have played that poorly the entire yeah, game? I don't, I, uh, yeah, and I, the answer, I think, actually is probably going to be yes, because when he was in there, I mean, those first couple drives were terrible. They were just getting steamrolled the entire game. So I think probably, I mean, it would have been a little bit closer, maybe. You know, you're talking about the game that was 42 to 10, but I don't know. And, and he threw, didn't he throw the two passes to Elijah Moore after he ended up getting hurt. It felt like it was the touchdown pass, definitely. Yeah, where he was wide open, and he put it right on him. And I and I and I will say, you know, from that, you know, the first half, you know, the first half, I, I felt like, you know, uh, Mike Lafleur had some really good concepts, was doing some fun things, trying to utilize, you know, different ideas, and and it was fun. But again, if you can't stop the opposing team, yeah, what's the point? Really, I mean, what's the yeah. point? I mean, like. <laughs> I mean, Jonathan Taylor was running all over the place. Yeah, and so, so was Naheem Hines. So both right. of them were. And, you know, this is what I was afraid of because, uh, you know, they ended up uh, losing uh, two, uh, two uh, turnovers. One was late, of course. But uh, the other fumble, Darius Leonard goes in there and just punches it out of the hands of Ty Johnson. And that fumble was also a very significant play because it just adds the momentum back to the Colts in their building. And, you know, it's a young team. They're going to they're gonna have games like this. Yeah, but the problem is they had two out of three with a defense got just it was a stampede. Hey, you're right. I That's, mean, I don't know what else to tell you other than that uh this is this is what I kind of thought it was gonna look like, especially with without Mike White playing and, yeah. and having a reason to watch the game. Right. Not, nothing against Josh Johnson. I mean, he he put up numbers and a lot of those numbers were late. Yeah. He almost had three straight I think three straight scoring drives at the end of the game. But yeah, I mean, good for him that he they yes. stuck in there and did that. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he's a third string quarterback, but he's been around the league forever. He's been on a million teams and he's not going to be a part of the future. So that that's why it's not, you know, when he puts up 300 yards in a in garbage time, it's not as a Bengals. I mean, we understand that, but I guess he got his uh, feeling back at his fingers in the fourth quarter. Cause that's really what happened. I guess he maybe sprained a tendon or something there in his forearm and he lost feeling in his middle finger and his ring finger and he wasn't able to to grip the ball at all yeah so that's why he wasn't able to come back in the game and then he started regaining that feeling in his finger so if that's the case and he's healthy it's got to be him against the bills isn't it it has to be i i you know i guess it all depends on where zach wilson is and i like i said but standing on i mean i don't even if he's complete if they're both completely healthy i think it has to, it has to be mike white again it has to be because wow. we didn't get a chance to see the encore, really. And we saw one really good drive. 
I'm telling you, every time that guy had time, I felt like he was going to complete a pass. Every single time he had an opportunity to throw and had time in the pocket, you were like, he's going to complete a pass. And he did. It's crazy. I mean, and then those two throws to Elijah Moore, I mean, one, he's wide open, but he doesn't miss them. How many times have we seen guys wide open and get missed? And the one prior to that, we're down the field. Yeah, he definitely has, you know, he has the poise and he has the temperament. There's no question about that. And It's not over yet. You're tell- I get- I'm getting a feeling from you that it's over. It's not over. I, well, I, you know, I'm not, I don't know if it's over. I, it all depends really on Zach Wilson. I mean, you know, he is the, the, the bonus baby. He is the, the, you know, they brought in his own little quarterback coach to deal with him. I'm still, you know, how that bothers me. But anyway, um, you know, I, I don't want to manufacture some sort of quarterback controversy. Well, it's not, though. It's but. not. I mean, it's it's not manufacturing a quarterback controversy. What happened was you had a guy play better than the uh, the rookie by miles, then come back, orchestrate a touchdown drive where he looks impressive again, and then get hurt. So if both of them are healthy at the same time, then to me it's just a no-brainer that Mike White has played better. I, and and it's not like Zach Wilson's going to lose his job forever, but you have you cannot just shut down what you saw from Mike White when he was healthy because Zach Wilson is there. This well, but Wilson also, it also may back. give them an extra ten days to, well, I guess seventeen days uh, more rest for Zach Wilson, which wouldn't be a bad thing. It's not like you know they're turning around this whole season and going somewhere. Now, now it's really about finding out what you have uh, with your young players, and young players are all going to get a chance to play now due to a lot of the injuries and things that you know the the stuff that's going on, which would tell me that you know your young quarterback needs to play now. You no, know, and and by the fa- by the fact that he's been standing on the sideline and watching all of this can only help him. Honestly, can only help him. I mean, he's seeing what Mike White is doing, and he's seeing how to utilize the offense and. Uh, Mike LaFleur has been a little bit more uh, creative with the offense. And I'm just going by the first half. I'm not going by the second half. The second half was whatever. It was garbage time, 42 to 10. And then, you know, whatever happens after that, you know, guys are trying to get numbers and guys are trying to, you know, have fun playing and and that's fine. But I'm talking about the first half with Mike White and and the way that Mike LaFleur was calling the plays and the way that the, the offense actually looked competent until the fumble for Ty Johnson. You know, if you don't have the fumble, then all of a sudden, you know, maybe things change around a little bit. But I, they, they have to play. Zach Wilson is going to have to play at some Against point this year. Against the Bills, though? I'm just saying, he's, some, at some point this year, he's got to get back under center because they got to see what they have. And they got to see whether or not this little break here, this little time off has helped him understand what they're trying to do on offense. And maybe he has a different perspective and he'll take – what he has learned over the last couple of weeks back out on the field with him. If they sat here and they told us that, and they don't have to make the decision right now, by the way, they don't, I, I don't, you know, Rob Sala doesn't have to come out and say, Hey, next and week. He didn't. Yeah. I know he didn't. And, and they want to make sure that he, Mike White, first and foremost, is healthy. They also want to make sure that Zach Wilson is healthy. Um, and there's plenty of time for both of those guys to finish out this season. They'll have after the Bills. They'll have three, what do they have, eight games left after that? Yeah, should be, let's see. Yeah, eight games yes. after that. And the Dolphins and the Texans are easier opponents, obviously, than Buffalo is, so maybe that's a time to work them back. But I just, I wouldn't put them back in against the Bills. I just think that that's just a slaughterhouse situation. Well, I also think that you, uh, with you going to the game with the Winters brothers and everybody yeah. else, that you want to see Mike White play. There's a, without a doubt, there's a there's a personal side of that, and of course, I bet the Mike White over yards yesterday. Yeah, and he's out. I mean, he would have gone over a hundred percent. Josh Johnson went over. The Mike White would have gone over. He had ninety five yards and two drives. Yeah, I mean, he's going to go good. over two two fifty three and a half. He looked solid, man. He looked really but solid because he's, he's got it. He's there's. I mean, the guy has got it. There's something there, and you can't shut it down now. Just because. I mean, think about him and how freaking frustrating that is. I mean, he's out there. This is his opportunity. He throws a touchdown pass, and then he has to come out of the game because he can't feel his fingers. It's like unbelievable. Yeah, well, that, now you know the life of a Jet fan. You know, we're not Jet fans, but we certainly were rooting for the kid. Did you see Pat Boyle's tweet, by the way, before the game? This guy predicted this. It's unbelievable. He predicted exactly what happened, almost to a T. So before the game, it's 637. Pat Boyle, WFAN star, Ayo, Pat Boyle on the fan. The guy who drank the beer out of Boomer's office and slept on his couch in total disrespect. 
Pat Boyle tweets out, how Jets would it be if Mike White throws a TD on the opening drive, then gets hurt for the rest of the game on the second drive? Hey, oh, hey, oh, now it ended Pat up being Boyle. This, this WFAN star Pat Boyle. I mean, it ended up being the second and third drives, but that guy tweeted that out at 638, almost two hours before the hey, game. Hey, I'm the star of WFAM. WFAN's Pat Boyle. Hey, and it is so Jets. Hey, hey, oh. Same old Boyle, Jets. Boyle and Shen. But it, I mean, it is it is just so Jets, and I and I feel terrible for the fans. I really do, and I know people are going to call up and be like, "Oh, you mushed them. Oh, you touched the money. Oh, this. Oh, that." I still stand by the fact that you had to be excited going into last night's game. There was just no reason not to be. I mean, when and a guy now gets this morning hurt, sucks. Yeah, when, sucks. You, when a guy gets hurt, you're not touching any money. I mean, I we we were rooting the kid on. We wanted the kid to have a great game. And, and he, he would, and, and we were very thankful that we actually had him playing in this game because it actually gave it some buzz. Yeah, it did until it was. I have to say when he was standing on a sideline and they were it looking was just the worst. I was thinking of Al the whole time. I have to say. Well, what time did you go to bed, Al? Because I was waiting for that tweet. You said you were going to send out a tweet before you went to bed after you got a feel for the game. I watched the first two drives after uh, he threw that touchdown. Yeah, seven uh, seven shut the TV right off. And so didn't, I didn't even see that he was hurt. Oh, 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 man. So even when I woke up, I I checked the score, 45-30. I was like, all right, respectable. He put up 30 points. Their defense stunk. And then to see he didn't play another down. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. So you didn't experience the, the heartbreak. No. You went to bed still thinking that Mike White was going to be a huge story this morning. Absolutely. You know I what's mean, amazing to me is that you could actually fall asleep at 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> like... There's no excitement. There's no, like, your heart's not pumping. You're not up, and you're not in front of the TV thinking, like, this could be something magical happening yeah, like here. Going to sleep watching him come out of the game. Like, that's one thing. Being like, all right, Josh Johnson's in. I'm shutting the TV off. But it's 7-7 after he throws the touchdown pass? Yeah, because I know in this day and age, I could just pick it up right where I left off in the morning. Wow. Fresh I, I just, eyes. There's no way. Like, for some reason, I just can't turn it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? I turned it off. And then I, and then on 10. top of that, I got to go watch the, the Islanders and the Canadians. <laughs> I mean, like, so I'm going back and forth. You're sick. You know, I, well, 40, I don't know if 42 I'm 10, sick. 42-10, I, I checked out. I'm sorry. You know, when you have to get up and do a show, 42-10, I said. 42-10, no Mike White. See you later. I don't know. Whatever garbage time touchdowns you want to throw up there, that's when I'm done. But 7-7, seven, seven, I mean, I was going nuts. You know, it is amazing, though, when you, when you watch at, at, like what the Colts are. They're a good team. They got a good offensive line. They got a good running game, and and while Carson Wentz every time he breaks the pocket, I'm thinking he's going to make some stupid decision. You know, he was solid last night, really solid, and he had his three touchdown passes, and that's what you call a balanced attack. It doesn't it doesn't get any better for a coach. Uh, and I, I know with the way that Frank was calling plays last night, I think he was sending a message to maybe some of his critics that uh, they throw the ball too much or whatever. I mean, in this day and age, you're supposed to be throwing the ball. You still have to run it, of course, but last night I think that they felt like they had a distinct advantage on the offensive line and with their running game. And the way that Jonathan Taylor was running, it was uh, – I think he was kind of like sending a message to who's ever criticizing him about throwing the ball too much last night. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.